Hi everyone, it's me, Lindsay, with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about the iWalk 3.0, also familiar to some as the knee walker or the hands-free crutch. This is an awesome mobility aid specifically designed for individuals recovering from foot, ankle, or high ankle injuries. This is going to be below the knee, and it's great for if you're non-weight-bearing, partial weight-bearing for a period of time because it allows you to be hands-free while you move. I've been using this for the last several weeks as I've been recovering from a fifth metatarsal fracture on my left foot. Um, I found this to be a really awesome tool in my arsenal of tools, uh, and I'm going to show you some of the really quick stuff about it that I like, some of the things I didn't like so much about it. I'm also going to demonstrate what it looks like to walk with this in a couple of different environments, as well as how to do stairs, um, because it's kind of a unique product and it's not one that everyone has seen. I was amazed how many folks I came across when I used this out in public who had never seen anything like it and were so, so thrilled to see it, because it really is pretty cool. Okay, so let's start with the assembly. If you buy this new, It'll come in a box fully disassembled, which may seem a little overwhelming, but I have to say I was thrilled with the quality of the instruction available through the iWalk website. They have it on their website as well as here on YouTube. I'm going to link it down below as well, up, as, well as up here. Um, I would follow that very, very closely. You will get a perfect assembly if you do so. They also give excellent directions on how to size this. One of the most important things about using this product is that you get the sizing just right. It needs to be fitted properly at the thigh, it needs to be properly fitted at the knee, and it needs to be the right length down below because if it's off, it's a trip hazard. You could fall, it's really dangerous. So making sure you get that sizing right is so, so important. The other thing about using the iWalk is be prepared to practice. This didn't come to me naturally. It took me several days of using it and continuing to use it before I felt like I could walk on it really comfortably. So I'm young, I'm fairly physically fit, and this took me a while to get used to. There's a long list available on the website of individuals they don't recommend trying the iWalk. So it's really important to know this isn't for everyone. The weight capacity is 275 pounds. It has limits on how wide of a thigh it can accommodate. It also is going to be limited to individuals who do not have any presence of arthritis, significant arthritis in the knees and hips. It really puts a lot of strain and pressure right through the kneecap. I actually found this to be the most difficult aspect of adjustment to using this, is I was sore when I used it. It also puts a lot of strain on your hip because it weighs a little bit and you gotta swing it through. I found it to be really intuitive for how to take it on and off. However, you gotta take it on and off every single time you sit and stand. That to me was the biggest drawback to using this tool. It takes you a couple of seconds to do it, but every time you get up and sit down, this was um, kind of a pain if I had to get up and use the bathroom, for example. Um, I had to get up, take it on, take it off, and every single time I did that, it was like, ugh, such a pain. So that's something that I had to kind of adjust to while I was using it, just generally slow down. The other thing that's really important is if you have any balance issues, like if you have any pre-existing balance issues, I don't recommend using this as your primary mobility aid. It has um, very high fall risk if you're not super careful. Um, the foot itself is really interesting because you can see it has this kind of arc on it, which makes it possible for you to take kind of um, rolling steps more similarly to how you would with a natural foot movement, it's, which is a really cool design. But the grip on this is the best rubber grip I've ever had on a shoe or foot or anything, and it catches. So if you don't lift this all the way up or you have it set slightly too long, I have I tripped many times when I was using this because it would just simply catch on the carpet or on a tile floor or even outside on a hill or grass. Didn't work great for that. It's also not great on hills. Um, it was really difficult for me to navigate going up and down hills. So like I said, like any mobility aid, this was not the only thing I used during my foot recovery process. It's also really important to know what type of recovery you're doing. So I broke my foot. They gave me um, this awesome little orthotic shoe, which worked beautifully for this because it's totally out of the way. Um, but this isn't what I started with. When I came out of x-ray with my broken foot, they sent me home with one of these. This is a kind of a traditional cam boot, very common in foot and ankle injuries. Um, this is what they gave me in the urgent care. The problem with this is it has a front inflator. So this knob right here inflates the boot to make it more um, secure when, you mo when you're walking with it or you know, using it. 
This front knob makes it impossible to use with any sort of shin supported mobility aid because it's going to press directly into your shin every time you step and it is extremely painful. So not even, a, not even an option. You can use a cam boot with these eye walks but you have to make sure they're side inflated. So that knob, that inflation knob has to be on the side of the boot. It's something you can ask for in most orthotics um, departments, they'll have something like that but you gotta ask for it. If you have a cast, it's very important that you ask the cast maker, the person who's putting the cast on you, to create a flat area at the shin. Let them know you're planning on using something, if you can think ahead like this, let them know that you're gonna be using something that's going to be putting pressure through your shin because if you have a big bump at the edge of your cast, goes right into your shin, all that pressure, you'll get skin breakdown and you just won't even be able to tolerate it. So a couple of limitations there. Okay. So let's so, show you what it looks like to actually put this thing on. I found that the easiest way to apply it, I oftentimes had a chair behind me. I would use that for balance initially. I did develop better balance while using it and kind of have gotten a little quicker with it. But I'll just show you the way that they recommend, which is if you've got a chair near you, you can turn it around like this so that you have it to kind of hold on to. Hold on. I've got my padding here. I'll show you that in a second. All right, so I have this kind of as a place to, to hold on to because you have to be standing when you do this. And if you're non-weight bearing like I was, you're kind of hopping on one foot to get this positioned. So you're going to apply it to the knee. And I found that the easiest way to put it on was to apply this very farthest strap first because as you can see, I could kind of squat down to reach it. And I found that was the most balanced approach versus strapping at the top first. And then if you've applied these correctly, all you have to do is then pull these down tight at the blue. So there's a black and a blue. And if you watch the directions on how to install it and size it, they show you how to set this up. So important you get that right because that makes a big difference in the speed in which you can apply these. Then I shift to the one behind my knee. And these are nice little buckles. They just kind of go in and then lock. And then you pull down. This one's actually loosened up a little bit over time, so I would have to adjust that a little bit at the black strap too. Um, I haven't used this in a few days, so it's a little bit off, but then you do the top one, and we're in. You want it really snug. Um, it, if, I, if it's a little bit loose, it tends to slide around. It's not nearly as comfortable to wear, and you'll kind of feel unsteady in it. So the very first thing I did when I started using this, and um, I used it for an entire day like this and I was doing okay, but I had a lot of knee pain when I finished. And um, what I ended up doing, and I'm gonna show you this because I thought it was important to share, I had to add this chunk of very soft, squishy, so it has full compression, so it goes all the way flat, um, memory foam. And then I put a little towel, a little soft uh, microfiber towel over it. The reason I had to do this was because I could not tolerate the pressure of the cushion this came with into my knee. So what I ended up doing, like I said, is I would set it up. That's how you take it off. You just kind of pull those straps loose really easy. I would set this in place. It wasn't locked on in any way. It's really important to note though, this is not a manufacturer's recommendation, okay? This is just my personal experience. Having talked to a lot of people who have also used these, they found that they had to add a little cushion to the knee as well. I strongly recommend you consider your safety when doing this. Um, this may void any warranties with the project. I did not modify it. I just had to add this cushion. It's the only way I could tolerate using it. And that's what it looked like for me. So all put together, it's strapped on. You saw how fairly quickly I was able to get it on. And let me turn straight on so you can kind of see what this looks like. You can see that the foot points out. This is to give you kind of some lateral support so you're not likely to tip over. I liked to wear a shoe on the other foot because then I was more balanced as far as my hips being more level. That's really important so you don't end up with a tilted pelvis when this recovery process is all done. It does have this piece here. When you're first getting used to it, I'm gonna show you in a second what it looks like to walk. This little grip makes a huge difference because holding on to here gave me a sense of where my leg was because you don't have any sensation in this foot down here. So it's almost you like trying to swing through with a fake leg 
and it takes a ton of practice to get used to where it is in space. So it takes a lot of a lot of repetition. All right, so the next thing I'm going to show you is how it what it looks like to walk in this eye walk. I thought it would be best to show how this baby works on the most difficult terrain because if it works here it's going to work anywhere. And when you walk with this, you'll find that it is probably the easiest to use when you're having to deal with slightly off-kilter flooring or, like in this situation, grass. So I'm on a fairly flat area. Again, I don't love it on hills. You can manage hills, but I want to show you what it looks like to walk. So first I'm going to take some steps backwards with it. When you step backwards, you're going to kind of take small steps and rock on it. And I showed you how that foot was kind of arched like that, and that allows you to kind of roll with the foot a little bit. And I always lead with the, with the eye walk as I go backwards slowly. When I take steps forward, I can go forward like this. Now I can also, if I'm feeling like my hip is getting a little tired or I just don't trust the, the ground, that's where I'll grab here and kind of lift it and move with it. It makes it really easy and takes some pressure off my hip. The thing I love about this is the turning radius. Not only can I take side steps like this and to the other way, small side steps, which is awesome, but I can also pirouette on the spot, and I'm only limited by the distance back my foot goes. So I can take a full turn right where I stand. So, so helpful when you're in tight, narrow spaces like kitchens and bathrooms, and I took this to the store, I've taken it to the park, I've worn it on boats. I've really used this eye walk for all of those situations where my knee scooter, my crutches, um, even a walker were just really inconvenient. This was the best tool for those jobs. And through all of it, I was hands-free for the most part, able to carry things, able to help with my kids, able to cook, able to clean. So all of that was so, so useful. Now I'm gonna show you the other reason I loved the eye walk, and that was for doing steps. Okay, so we're at my stairs. I want to show you how I did the stairs with the eye walk. I really like the eye walk for stairs. I felt pretty safe, but you got to do it the right way. So when you're ascending or going up the stairs, you're going to face the stairs. It's so much easier up or down the stairs if you have a handrail available. You can get away without it and possibly use a cane, um, but I even found myself balancing with a wall or whatever because I just liked having something to hold on to. So just so you know, I have it available on both sides half the way up and on the left side all the way up, um, but I used the left side primarily. Okay, so to go up, you're going to go up to the step with your strong leg first. So your non-injured foot is going to always ascend first. So up with the good, follow through with the eye walk, just like that. Don't try to skip a step, it's too dangerous. Up with the good, Follow with the eye walk. Up with the good, follow with the eye walk, take your time. I could carry something while I did this, which was really nice. Now, when you are coming down the stairs, this is so important and it's a little controversial because people have done it the wrong way a few times, but it's really important that you actually go down backwards. This is the manufacturer's recommendation and in my experience, the only way I felt safe. You cannot turn around and go forward or you'll hit your foot all the way down the stairs, and I promise you that really hurts. So when you go down the stairs, having something to hold on to is great. The nice thing about it is you can hold on to something on either side depending on how your stairs are laid out. Um, I'm gonna hold on to the left side because it's there. You're going to go down the opposite way you went up, so you're just going to go down. I walk, eyeball it onto the step. Make sure you're watching to make sure it goes onto the step because you're not gonna feel it. So you're gonna go down with the eye walk, follow through with the strong leg. Down with the eye walk, Follow through, down, follow through. It's that simple. Stairs are really, really good with the eye walk, but as long as you do them that way. Don't recommend the side-stepping approach. Some people do that so that they can visualize the step a little bit easier. I just found, because my stairway is quite narrow, and I really didn't want to hit my foot, the safest and most secure way I did it was to go backwards. So definitely give that a try. All right, so there you have it the iWalk 3.0, all the information that I wanted to share and my experience using it personally. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them down below. As always, if you need more information on how to stay safe and independent in your home and community, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT. Thank you.